Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jonas. Uh, I'm one of your TAs for the course introduction to deep learning for the coming spring 2023. And this recitation will cover data pre-processing. Uh, some of the topics that we will discuss are, we'll start with the introduction, talk about the importance of pre-processing, and also we'll talk about how we can pre-process speech data and extract MFCCs from error audio data. Uh, let's start with the introduction. The first question is why do we need to pre-process data? Um, machine learning models in general learn a pattern from data. That means uh, we give them a large amount of data as an input along with the label or the prediction we want to make and these machine learning models learn to predict from the input data. So that means the performance of these machine learning models depend on the type of data that we provide. If we give them a good data, they will learn to perform well. And also on the same time, at the same time, if we give them a bad data, our models will not perform well. That's why that's one that's one of the main reasons to do pre-processing. In a more to define uh, data pre-processing in a more formal term, uh, data pre-processing is a step in a machine learning pipeline that takes raw data as an input and transforms it to make it suitable for consequent steps such as training a model. So pre-processing is applied before other processing steps, uh, hence the name pre-processing. Uh, for example, as shown in the figure below, uh, that this pre-processing -pre step comes before the raw data, before it's passed to other uh, tasks, in this case, training a machine learning model. Uh, one thing we can also notice is that uh, the training and the inference, even though they have the same step, the pre-processing is done separately. Um, one of the main reasons to do that is to avoid data leakage. So we'll come to that later. So due to this, it's very important to split the data set into training and testing before any pre-processing. As I mentioned earlier, this helps us avoid data leakage. Next, um, let's talk about the importance of pre-processing. Uh, pre-processing uh, can be done for various reasons, and some of them are mentioned here, and there are a lot of other reasons to do pre-processing. And in this recitation, I'll go through uh, every one of them and explain how uh, we can pre-process data as well as explain in detail the reasons behind pre-processing. Uh, the first one is data cleaning. Uh, there are, uh, uh, as uh, I pointed out here, there are four main reasons to do data cleaning. And the first one is uh, uneven range of values. Uh, this means that uh, some features might have values that are naturally very large, while others are naturally very small. So this might lead to the former attribute to get uh, undue importance over the later. To mitigate uh, the uneven range of values, we can do to we can apply two techniques: the first one scaling, and the second one normalization. Uh, in scaling, we fit the data into a fixed scale, like between 0 and up to 100, or between 0 and 1. And also, in normalization, the data is transformed to have a normal distribution. Generally, normalization is preferred when our machine learning model expects the data to have a normal distribution. The second one is data type mismatch. Uh, data type mismatch uh, happens when the data is collected from different sources that might have mismatch data type. For example, uh, a financial data might have different currencies. Uh, so it's important to handle mismatch like this. And the third reason for cleaning the data is, is to handle missing data values. So it's not always the case for the data to have uh, zero missing values and having a missing data attribute is common case in a machine learning world. So it's very important to clean the data before training our models. 
and in order to handle missing data values you can either impute the data or ignore the row imputing the data means filling the uh, missing data values with uh, other numbers such as the mean of our feature the median or the mode uh, and also there are other techniques to imputing uh, the last part is uh, how do we clean text and speech? Uh, generally, uh, clean text and, in cleaning text and speech data, we might need to clean or remove URLs, uh, stop words, HTML tags, uh, emojis, and also in speech um, and words like R values. Um, the next one is uh, preprocessing high dimensional data. Um, even though high dimensional data is desirable, it can it also comes with its own problems. And the two main problems in high dimensional data are not all features are equally important, and also the data might be too large in terms of dimensionality. This is uh, the issue uh, for training performance as well as training time and space. And going back to the first one. Uh, our data might not be equally important. That means we might have uh, collinear features, features that are that are collinear to each other. This creates a problem while training the data as well as the next one is uh, some of the features might be noisy. Um, to mitigate the issue with high dimensional data, uh, we might do feature coloration to select features by calculating the correlation against the target variable as a proxy for importance and remove features below some threshold. That means we calculate the correlation between our feature and the target and we remove features that have a correlation value of some value. And there are also other techniques to handle high dimensional data. Uh, we can do dimensionality reduction uh, by applying uh, feature selection, like forward feature selection, backward feature selection, applying filters, and also we can create new features from existing features using uh, non-linear and linear models. So, uh, for example, in linear models, we might apply PCA, LDA, SVM, uh, and also we can apply other kernel functions and autoencoders as well. Uh, Later, a uh, professor will discuss about autoencoders. So that's one thing to look for. So the next topic is uh, data leakage. Uh, data leakage occurs when the data that's not available during prediction is used for training. So for example, some input features are correlated with the output or it has part of the output while training, which won't be available during inference. Uh, for example, one example of this could be, for example, uh, during training for in order to predict the visit time for an e-commerce site, um, the training might use uh, features like the websites that one has visited in order to determine the wait time, the visit time of the website. But during inference, we might that kind of data might not be available. So cases like this are called data leakage and they should be handled in order to get a good performing model. Some of the solutions in order to prevent data leakage are uh, remove the features, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, those features should be removed if they are not available during inference. So. And also separate validation set to check the model performance during training. Uh, and also we can use scaffold cross validation if we don't have uh, enough data to separate it to training and validation set. Uh, and also uh, normalizing the training data separately and then use those parameters for the test that set. The second reason the other reason for uh, pre-processing data is uh, because some of the attributes of the data set might not be always numerical and in the machine in the machine case that in in a machining case it's known that uh, we the machines accept uh, inter, um, accept and interpret numerical values so we might need to convert those categorical data values into 
numeric values before training. So some of the methods uh, to convert categorical data into numerical are first, uh, the first one is uh, we can map the class uh, into unique numbers. That means, for example, if we have two values, we can map them into one and two or zero and one. And the other one is uh, to create one whole encoded vector. And the third one is uh, using feature hashing. This is the case for uh, when we have large data set or, or if we want to encrypt the large data. For example, uh, if we are doing uh, emotion classification, emotion happy can be encoded into this vector. Next, let's talk about different tools that we can use for pre-processing. Uh, there are various uh, Python libraries that support data pre-processing. Uh, in general, uh, we can divide them into PyTorch-based and then uh, Scikit and Pandas and NumPy-based pre-processing tools. Uh, in this course, we'll leverage PyTorch for training machine learning models. So it's important to know some of the libraries or and some of the functions that are available for data pre-processing. And uh, some of the techniques that uh, that are found in PyTorch are random sampling, with random sampling, filters for cleaning data, uh, and random splitting and shuffling. Uh, in addition, uh, we might also need to do data augmentation. Uh, in that case, uh, we might uh, use libraries that come with PyTorch, such as Torch Vision for image, Torch Audio, for audio augmentation and touch text for text-based augmentation. Uh, these uh, libraries are used when implementing the PyTorch data loader class. We, uh, and also uh, we can uh, do random data sampling, applying filters and normalize features using scikit, pandas and numpy. Uh, next, uh, we'll talk about how we do how we pre-process speech data. Uh, first, let's talk about three main important points before talking about how we can pre-process speech data and why it's necessary to pre-process. The first one is speech signals can be understood as a mixture of signals at various frequencies. Uh, that means when someone speaks, the signal over time uh, contains uh, a signal at various frequencies. And the second one is uh, raw speech signal uh, is not always the best source of data for models to work with due to two main reasons, uh, because it contains noise and it naturally, it's naturally continuous and it needs to be discretized. And the second, the third one is uh, reckless discretization can lead to noisy frequency bands, especially the high ones. And next, uh, we'll talk about uh, MFCC. So MFCC stands for male frequency spectral coefficients and uh, uh, let's talk about what each and every one of the word means. Uh, male frequency here is used to represent how human perceives uh, an audio uh, speech signal. So in this case, uh, uh, it basically resembles to the log of the frequency uh, signal. And the second one is coefficients. Coefficients is basically the end result of the, after uh, after an audio signal is passed through several transformations in order to get the MFCC values. So the most common ones are uh, 12 or between two, two up to, uh, 12 or 13 frequency bands. And the last one is sepstral. Sepstral is basically uh, coined by taking the first half of the spectrum and taking the reverse of the first, taking the, the, reverse, the reverse of the first half. Uh, this is used to represent how the coefficients, to show how the coefficients were extracted because given uh, the frequency we take, we, apply, we pass it to the F, we take the log of the F, and then we reverse it back to, uh, we take the inverse of the function. And generally, when it comes to generating MFCCs, 
uh, these are the steps that we should take, we should apply in order to extract MFCCs. And we can, we can group the steps into three main states. Uh, the first one, this one, and second one, and the last one. And we'll go through each and talk about it. So the first stage, the first stage is basically a pre-processing step before extracting the coefficients. And it involves first taking the continuous analog signal into discrete, di discrete digital signal. And this is uh, the basic step. And then once we get the digital signal, we apply what's called pre emphasis uh, in order to boost uh, the energy of higher frequency signals. And uh, in the end, this will allow us to uh, improve the signal to noise ratio because uh, high frequency, once we boost high, the energy of high frequency signals, uh, we can see the overall picture. And the third one is uh, framing and windows. Uh, in this stage, uh, we segment the signal into uh, a fixed window size. For example, in this case, 25 millisecond with uh, 10 millisecond apart. So uh, this is the first stage. Once we have done that, the second stage will be to actually extract the coefficients. This can be done by first taking the Fourier transform, the digital Fourier transform, and this first converts the signal from the time domain into frequency domain. That means uh, when we have an amplitude over the y-axis to uh, the time domain over the x-axis, this will be changed into a frequency values uh, and over the x-axis to their energy values over the y-axis. Next, uh, we map the signal onto uh, a separate frequency bands at the male frequency scale. As I discussed this earlier, this is uh, applied because this process is close to the nonlinear human perception of sound. And later, once we have done that, we put back the signal into a time domain. So this is the, in this way, we can extract the overall uh, coefficient values. Uh, once we have done that, we add the energy at the end and we apply some post-processing post in order to extract the features. Um, finally, uh, I have attached uh, a collab notebook sample that shows how uh, we can extract MFCCs uh, from error audio signal using a library. Uh, so I would highly recommend for you to go through and then see how uh, the frequencies can be extracted. So this is all about uh, data preprocessing and uh, I hope you have gained some insight uh, from this recitation.